special July 4th Antioch West virtual. In case you are wondering, I am not in my basement today. Uh, I've decided because of it being a special day that I wanted to do this here at this location. Now, you may not know what this location means, but I'm standing and right off my shoulder, uh, about a half mile over there, is Fort McHenry. Now, for those of you that really don't know what that's about, Fort McHenry is a very important monument to our country. If you would have been standing here at this spot uh, in 1814, you would have witnessed one of the greatest moments in the history of our country. On September 12th, 19, uh, 1814, the British were sailing just off that point. They had come to take Fort McHenry. And eventually, if they defeated Fort McHenry, they would take Baltimore, and that would be their end to take back America. They had just left Washington, D.C., which is about 30 miles in that direction, and uh, they had burned Washington, D.C. to the ground. They had chased our president from the White House, and it didn't look good for our country, and they had brought uh, their ships sailing out there in the harbor. So if you were standing here that fateful day, you would have seen the mast of the British ships out on the horizon. Beginning on September 12th, for 25 hours, they bombarded that piece of land right out there. For 25 hours, over 1,500 bombs exploded just on that one small piece of land. For 25 hours, America's future hung in the balance. For 25 hours, we weren't sure what would be left of the fort and the thousand men that stood between the British and the city of Baltimore. Just over there, you can see it, is the Francis Scott Key Bridge. On that night, there was a man by the name of Francis Scott Key, who was a lawyer at the time, who was actually on a ship right out there in the harbor. He had been dispatched to go out and to do a prisoner exchange and negotiate a prisoner exchange. It just so happened that at the time of the exchange of the prisoners, the British were planning their attack on Fort McHenry. So instead of letting Francis Scott Key and the group that was with him leave they held them there on that ship so francis scott key sat there in the harbor and watched in horror for 25 hours as bomb upon bomb exploded on fort mchenry now like all of us if we were standing there that night watching this explosion happening we would wonder as well what would be left of the fort would there be anybody left alive and would there be anything left? Because if the fort goes, Baltimore goes. And now Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, they're both gone. And what is to say of America? So as they watch this event take place, they were holding their breath. Would the fort withstand the night? Would the fort withstand the barrage? And so with nothing else to do but to hope and wait, they waited and waited and waited. Bomb upon bomb exploding on that small piece of land right out there. The entire weight of the country rested on what would be left of that piece of land right over my shoulder. We stand here on July 4th, obviously, we celebrate today. You guys are going to probably go out today and have some enjoyable time this afternoon celebrating our independence that we celebrate today on July 4th. But in reality, that independence hung in the balance right here on that piece of land. What would be left on that next morning? What would be there when the bombs stopped bursting in air? Dawn 
of September 14th, 1814, after 25 hours of a constant barrage, suddenly silence. Nothing. And the British and the Americans that would have been standing on this very shore watching this happen all stood with bated breath. Would there be anything left of this fort when the sun came up on that September 14th morning? Francis Scott Key, which was standing on a ship off to my left, grabbed his eyeglass and he began to peer at the fort to see which flag would be raised on that morning. And to his amazement, after all of that, when it was said and done, he caught a glimpse through his glass of Mary Pickersgill masterpiece, The Stars and Stripes. And he knew because the banner still flew over that fort, he knew the fort stood and the American soldiers had lasted the night. Filled with inspiration, he began to pin what has now become our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. And when he began to describe that fateful night and that morning of anticipation, he so beautifully said what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. Who brought stripes and bright stars on that morning when the sun rose, theirs was the stars and stripes still shining brightly. I know for some of us today, I haven't come to give you a history lesson. I haven't come to bore you with history, even though most of you know by now I am a history buff, and I am also very much proud to be an American. I brought you here to this point today to share this with you on this July 4th Sunday, because today we're going to celebrate our history, our American history, our independence. But there are some things about our independence that we need to remember, but ultimately today is not a history lesson. Today is not about the history of Fort McHenry. It's not even to tr promote the stars and stripes. I know that in the last couple of years, there has been some things about our country that has caused people to choose sides. I'm not here today to get into that debate. That's not the point of what I'm trying to make with today. I brought you here because if you and I would have been standing there that day looking out across these waters from this very piece of land and we would have looked, we would have saw that after all of the hopelessness, after all of the, the constant barrage, we would have seen the beauty of the stars and stripes still shining there. We would have seen the fact that the fort withstood the night. I get it. This is Pastor Joel again, giving one of those crazy Sunday messages. But I really haven't come here to sensationalize. I really come here to, to share with you something that I feel like God has placed on my heart about today. And what a perfect backdrop for you to, il to illustrate this point. Because you see, in life, we go through periods of time where it feels like all hell is against us. We go through seasons where it feels like we're hopeless. There have been times in my life, there have been times in my, in, in my, and with my family, there have been times in my marriage, there have been times with, with my health, there have been times with family, and there have been times with church, and there's been times with a lot of things where I felt very much like Francis Scott Key on that very fateful night. No, it wasn't a fort that I was watching, but I was watching when all of the bombardment of my life stops will there be anything left what's going to be left of me if the when 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 all of this stops when the when the pain stops when the hurt stops when when it feels like everybody's coming against me 
whether it, you feel like the, the, the adversary is against you or friends are against you, your boss is against you, family is against you, your, 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 your inner circle is against you. There are periods of time we go through where it feels like everybody is against us. And maybe you feel like that today. Maybe today is July 4th and you're celebrating, but there is also a war going on in your life. There's a war going on inside of you and you're waiting to see what's going to be left on the other side. And today you might feel like Francis Scott Key. You feel like a spectator to your life. You're kind of holding on, waiting. If this last part falls, if this last domino falls into place, there's nothing left to stop my life from slipping away. And so you're sitting there and you want to have faith. You, you, want, you, want to, you want to feel encouraged, but it's hard because you're waiting. When all of it's done, which flag? is going to be flying. What's going to be left of me when all of it stops? You know, I go through periods of scripture and I look at some of the events that people went through. And obviously one of the most pivotal, if not the most pivotal, would have been standing there on that fateful day as you look up at Jesus' body, gasping in pain with every breath he takes on the cross, you're not sure if that's gonna be the last breath. And then you hear him cry out with such agony. And then you see the man Christ Jesus, God robed in flesh, cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can't imagine what that must have been like to be standing there beneath that cross, looking up at the one that you thought was gonna be the one that takes all of this away. And yet here he is moments away from death. I get we know the other side of the story. I get the fact that, you know, well, they should have known he was going to raise, rise again in three days. They should have known all that. But let's be honest, we're all human. I imagine the, the intense struggle that must have been going on. We see how Peter reacted. He didn't handle it well. And yes, I wish you could have said, well, they all were filled with faith, but there was, a, there was an agony from their human side because they looked up and, and to them, they saw their future slipping away. They saw their hopes and their dreams slipping away because there's Jesus Christ on the cross. And if Jesus dies, what's going to be left? What's going to be left at us? I, I've left my family. I've left friends. I've given up everything the last three and a half years. I've been a follower of Jesus Christ, and now here he is on the cross. This is what I signed up for? can't imagine what that feeling must have been like that day. I can't imagine what it must have been like to stand there because just like standing here looking at that fort when it's all said and done what's going to be left when they pulled jesus's dead body off that cross and they carried him and you watched them put them in that tomb and then you watched them put this giant stone in its place that had to have been the most sinking feeling is this it is this the way it's going to end is this what we signed up for? Standing here on that September 4th morning, maybe as, a Mar as an American who's, who stood for independence, is this it? Is this, have we been a nation for only 30 years to end like this? Because if the British take Baltimore, we're back to where we started. The disciples, the followers of Jesus Christ watched their savior their banner be put in a tomb. Now we know the rest of the story, but they didn't know the story yet. They were still walking in the unknown. They were walking in hopelessness. We know how they reacted because the Bible says they locked themselves in a room. They, they put themselves in a place because they didn't know what the answer was going to be. They didn't know what flag was going to be left standing when the, when the bombardment stopped. They didn't know what was going to be left when, when all of the sun rose. But we know the rest of the story. We know what happens on that third day when Jesus rose from the grave. And after three days in the grave, the banner still flew. He was alive and there was hope. And so here we are today, 
July 4th, 2021. Maybe tonight you'll celebrate with fireworks. Maybe tonight, like me, you'll wear your patriotic gear. Maybe you'll proclaim your proudness as an American. But today, instead of thinking about our country and our patriotism, maybe today, let's think about where you are in your life. Does it feel like you're standing here watching, hoping and waiting what's going to be left of me? You see, one of the worst places to be in life is when you feel like everything is out of your control. We love to be in control. We love to be able to have the ability to control things. That's sort of human nature, right? We try to control, but let's be honest, there are times where there is no control. Just like it would have been that day standing on this piece of land watching across the water. I didn't have a gun. All I had was a was was two eyeballs telling me this is doesn't look good. There's no control here. If I was standing here those 200 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to control anything. I would have had to watch and hope, pray and wait. There are some of you today that are struggling because you can't control the things around you. You can't control. All you're doing is watching problem after problem, situation after situation, hurt after hurt, bombard, bombard, bombard. And today, hope is slipping away. Today, you're not sure what's going to be left when all the bombs stop. But I've come today with a message of hope. I've come today to tell somebody that as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, as long as you keep looking with faith, when it stops, I have an answer for you. The stars and stripes are still going to be flying. When all of it stops and the smoke clears and the bombs cease and the rockets glare, drift away, Jesus is always going to be standing. You see, I don't give you today some pie in the sky message. I don't give you today something that is theory. I give you today reality because there have been nights I have gone to bed wondering what will happen when I wake up in the morning. But I'm so thankful to tell you that when I've woken up in the morning, guess what? Jesus is still there. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He's always been there. I know a lot of you know this today. I know a lot of you already know this message, but to know it and to live it is something different. To know it and to believe in it, to know and to walk in it. Because if we look at what we can see with our eyes, I'm going to talk about this next week in our Mark series, about seeing. What eye are you seeing with? We're going to talk about what eye you're seeing with, but, but if I can only look with my natural eye, my situation looks hopeless, but faith does not rely on what I can see. Faith relies on what I know, and what I know is God is faithful. God is faithful. God is somebody that when everything stops, you can still see him. And when the hurt and the pain is too overwhelming, if you just can keep your eyes and faith focused on him, he will see you through. The scripture says, and I love it, it's not just theory, it's not just a postcard, but I love it. It says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy, forgive me, I'm outside, people look at me like I'm crazy, but I feel Jesus. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Can I tell somebody today, July 4th, 2021, standing in the harbor of Baltimore, looking at Fort McHenry, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy, joy, I'm about to run around on these rocks here for a moment. Joy is coming in the morning. So what do I need to do? Sometimes I need to just put my feet flat down and say, you know what? God, I'm going with you. I know what it seems like. I know what it looks like. But God, I'm sticking with you. My 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 natural mind says I'm crazy. My eyes say it doesn't it doesn't look possible. But my faith says, God, I believe. I believe. 
Somebody needs to confess today. I don't have an answer for you. I can't tell you that the bombs are going to stop today. I haven't come to give you a word today to say the, that the, it's all God's about to give you victory. I've come to tell you, don't look at what you can see with your eyes. Don't look at the fact that bomb after bomb is falling because just wait when the when it's all over when it all stops if you can just stand firm where you are and keep looking unto jesus who's the author and the finisher of your faith can i tell you when it's all said and done he's faithful can i tell somebody today he's faithful he's faithful i bind every spirit and every lie of the adversary in the name of jesus i bind every spirit of doubt i bind every spirit of unbelief and i loose right now in jesus name faith to rise in the hearts of those that are watching and listening right now in the name of jesus some of you need to re-engage your faith right now some of you need to begin to reach out on faith right now and say god i'm sorry lord but i've been doubting i've been struggling i've been dealing with fear i've been letting worry and doubt i've been letting what i can see with my natural eye control me but today Lord, I'm confessing again. I'm not going to look at what I can see, but I'm going to look with my faith. And my faith says, you're faithful. My faith says, it may look like you've just been taken down on the cross, but there's a grave and a resurrection that's coming because you're faithful. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy. Someone needs to look at somebody. I know you're sitting there with somebody on the couch, your husband, your wife. I mean, go outside, find a neighbor, tell them, say, listen, I got to tell you today, joy is coming in the morning. Joy is, don't judge me by my night. Don't judge this by the night. There's joy coming in the morning. There's joy coming in the morning. I know this is simple. I know some, I know I'm not, I'm not telling you something you don't already know, but I've come to tell somebody today in the Holy Ghost, joy's coming in the morning. I don't know when your morning is. I don't know if it's tomorrow morning, literally, or your morning is in a week, a month, or a year. I don't know, but I'm telling you, weeping may endure for the night, but joy in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of doubt. I bind every lying unbelief right now that's trying to steal faith from operating. I'm telling you right now, joy is coming in the morning. Some of you have been battling some things for so long. You've been letting the devil tear you down. Depression and doubt and fear. You may call it anxiety, but I'm telling you, the devil's using everything he can to tear you down, and you are almost ready to give up. But can I tell you? Look unto Jesus one more time. Lift your head one more time, the author and the finisher, because when the dust settles, he's still going to be standing. When all the hurt goes away, the cross is never going away. It's only going to endure for the night, but joy's coming in the morning. Somebody today be encouraged. Somebody needs to be encouraged today because I've taken this July 4th Sunday morning to tell somebody when you're eating your hot dog and your hamburger today and you're hanging outside and you're shooting fireworks tonight, I want you to hear that. Joy's coming in the morning. Joy's coming in the morning. Don't judge where you are by what you can see, but judge where you are by who's going to be standing on the end. I know one thing. It's been said a thousand times, but I'm going to use it again because I like it. I've checked in the back of the book, and guess what? You know who's standing at the end? He is. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. You know what that means? He was here before it started, and long after it's all done, he's going to be standing. So if I'm going to put my, put, if I'm going to pick sides, I'm going to pick sides with the one who's the start and the end, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Be encouraged today in Jesus' name. Silence the doubt. Silence the fear. How do I do that? You silence it by confessing, speaking faith. You silence it by not looking about what you can see. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That means on that night, instead of seeing darkness, we could have seen with our faith that flag's still there. Well, you can't see it yet, but I know, trust me, in the morning, it's going to be there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you not seen the last 25 hours there's been bombed? Trust me, I'm telling you, I'm not looking what I can see here. I'm telling you, on the morning of September 14th, that flag's still going to be there. Oh, you're crazy. Call me crazy, but I'm not looking with my natural. I'm looking with my spiritual. Somebody today needs to turn off the natural eye and embrace the eye of the spirit, faith. I know this is simple, you already know this. To know it is one thing, but to do it is another thing. We walk by faith, not by sight. Somebody needs today to determine, 
I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to walk by faith through my pain, through my hurt, through my doubt, through my fear, through my past, even into the unknown of my future. I'm going to walk by faith. And if you do that, if you activate your faith, trust me, when all of the bombing stops, Jesus is still standing. Be encouraged today. God bless you. Happy 4th of July. I pray in Jesus' name that you have a safe day today, that you, are, that you, uh, that you, you and your family are safe. On behalf of my wife and I and our three children, we want to wish all of you a very, very, very happy 4th of July, and God bless America. And please, let's pray for our country today. We need it. Our country's not perfect, but we still are Americans. And we are praying for our country today. God bless you, and we'll see you again next time in Jesus.